Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today our sermon title is Listen to Liz. In uh, Luke's Gospel, there are a lot of poor responses to God's coming kingdom. But Liz, how she, Elizabeth is known to her friends, is one of the rare exceptions. Elizabeth actually responds how she should to God's coming kingdom and Savior. Uh, today, we heard the story of Mary going to visit her relative Elizabeth. In fact, we're told that in those days, Mary arose and went with great haste to see Elizabeth. Now, we're not exactly sure why she left in a hurry, uh, but we could make some educated guesses. Perhaps Mary left town to simply hide her pregnancy. It's possible that Mary was kicked out of her own home by her appalled parents. Because you see, it's not only that she had done something wrong, but potentially she had forfeited the dowry. To Mary's parents, this would kind of be like if your insurance company, uh, if, or if a company mismanaged your retirement funds and lost them. Mary perhaps was avoiding Joseph, maybe not to tell him, or didn't know how to deal with uh, his frustration. Whatever it was, Luke paints a picture of Mary on the run, almost, rushing out of town faster than she would like. Jesus' arrival was not resulting in the world rejoicing. But you know, Jesus might as well get used to it because it's the kind of reception Jesus will continue to receive. After all, Jesus will be born in a barn. His parents will be so poor that they have to get the equivalent of free lunch when they bring an offering in redeeming the firstborn. When Jesus begins his ministry in his hometown, his Nazareth neighbors try to throw him off a cliff. When he heals the deaf, the lame, and the demon-possessed, he will often be accused, plotted against, and hated. Jesus will preach love for one's enemies. <laughs> and boy, will he have lots of opportunities to put it into practice personally. But eventually, his enemies will catch up with him and will crucify him. Throughout his ministry, Jesus will often be misunderstood, unfairly accused, and in danger. The fact that he was in danger even before being born, well... It's par for the course. But it's not all doom and gloom. When Mary shows up and greets her relative Elizabeth, there, with, with the help of some Holy, the Holy Spirit, we're told, finally, finally, there is some rejoicing. Mary, who, remember, is quite possibly running away from both her parents and her fiancé, is finally greeted with a proper welcome. John the Baptist seemingly can't wait to begin announcing that the Lord is nigh and begins jumping in Elizabeth's womb. Elizabeth has no accusations, no, how could you do this to me? Instead, she responds to the coming of the Lord with humility, gratitude, and awe. Elizabeth exclaims, but why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? To me. Blessed is she who has believed what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. You know, it's not always easy to rejoice when God's kingdom comes to us. Mary had to face unfair criticism and danger. Elizabeth, for her sake, she, had to, she was rejoicing that she was pregnant, but she still had to deal with pregnancy in her retirement. Um, Elizabeth not only had pregnancy to deal with. Of course, she also had to deal with her silly husband, Zachariah, who had offended an angel and got himself temporarily muted. So I'm sure he needed extra help at this time too. But nonetheless, Elizabeth rejoiced because God was not only working through her, the Lord was coming to her to be cared for in the womb of her relative. Well, we are still part of God's coming kingdom here today. But it's not always easy uh, when God's kingdom comes to us. God's kingdom comes to us often with responsibilities. We may sometimes try to do hard to do the right thing and still endure negativity or challenges. When we face hardships or negativity, when doing the right thing, it's tempting to complain or wallow instead of rejoicing. But God's kingdom, when it comes to us, 
often involves other people because God is concerned about people. He deals with people. So receiving God's kingdom often involves receiving other people. You see, God doesn't call us to simply be Christians, you know, in our own headspace or to live simply private Christian lives. No, Christians are called to walk together as we walk behind our Savior. We need others, and sometimes others need us. That's why we are the church. Or, uh, but some, yet sometimes we offend or sin against one another, or sometimes we simply miscommunicate or fail to do what we should. We get frustrated with one another, yet uh, just like a team, be it work or otherwise, often coming together, resolving our differences and moving forward can actually help us draw together, especially since we have, uh, we're not in it alone, but we have the Holy Spirit's help to guide us just as the Holy Spirit was there with Elizabeth and John the Baptist. Um, in our facilities, uh, now we have, as I, I think of anyway, when God's kingdom coming to us, now we have not two worship services, but now we have four worship services going on somewhere in our facility between 9 a.m. and noon. <laughs> that means a lot of traffic going into different rooms. Um, we, our gym gets used by four different groups or sometimes even more. And the demographics of the different worship services that we hold now in our facilities are very different. Sometimes we have concerns and conflicts. Uh, and whenever you share space, you run into those kinds of problems. Um, problems and conflicts among Christians certainly must be addressed. And communication, hard work, patience, and cooperation those are helpful characteristics um, and essential to making things work, or at least to making them work for long term. Uh, you get any, any group of people together, any congregation, no, how, no matter how different or similar or so, large or small for a long enough time, and you will have issues, sins, and problems because it's people we're dealing with. But the, the church will fall apart or stand for nothing if following Christ and walking with the other Christians is neglected or forgotten. And again, that's true of, of every church. No matter what the situation, um, all churches have to walk together, work together, and follow Christ. But I'm uh, personally, I, I don't know about you, but I'm proud to say that, that things are more complicated at Grace Lutheran Church than, it, than in some places. Uh, we've got a lot of sticks in the fire now uh, and a variety of things to juggle, and sometimes we have to deal with issues and resolve them. But you know what? I, I think it's all worth it because God's word is preached to a lot of different people. We foster faith in, uh, through, our, through our worship services, through our, our different Bible studies, through service projects and community outreach. Uh, there are lots of people, and now even lots of families, learning about Christ in our facilities. You know, it's not always easy, but I think undeniably God is working among us, and we have lots of reasons to give thanks. You know, when God uses us to spread the good news of Jesus, it's not always easy, but it is always good. Maybe you've heard of the battle of good versus evil. You know, it's a common Sometimes, sometimes I think the battle is actually good, not versus evil, but good versus EZ. Do I want to do the right thing, which will be harder, or do I just take it easy? That's a particularly common question given our, you know, our society, especially today, given all the conveniences and the entertainment available to us, there's always an easy way. It's always easier uh, to not tackle uh, problems. We can just sit back and relax and watch a show. Um, but as Christians, we are called to, to preach Christ, to make disciples, and to be faithful to our Savior. And uh, we can do that, and churches do that in a variety of ways. But again, personally speaking, I've never been more confident or pleased that, that we are doing that today, these days. Uh, we're not only thinking about ourselves or our own self-preservation, we're working together with fellow Christians. And I think it is a privilege to host fellow Christians, to partner, to work with, to work on, and to, uh, to share the gospel with others. And that's why I think it's wise for us to continue to listen to Liz. 
Because Elizabeth is grateful and rejoicing, even though her life is not any easier than it used to be. She's rejoicing and thankful, even though others are upset or worried. And she said, and why is it granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? She recognizes, even when barely anyone else does, that she is receiving honored guests, even her Lord. Jesus says later in, in Luke's gospel, whoever receives this child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. For he who is least among you all is the one who is great. Jesus instructs us, no matter who we are dealing with, to treat others, and particularly other Christians, as if we are greeting him through them. When a, and so when a fellow Christian comes to us asking for something that when we can in good conscience give them it, we should rejoice that God has so honored us to allow us to receive our Lord and serve his people. It's a privilege to serve others because in doing so, we serve our Savior. And having done so, we also listen to the promise Elizabeth gives at the end. And blessed is she who believed that there would be fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. God will fulfill his word, not only through us, but to us, because of the love of Christ our Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We continue with special.